what's up everyone welcome to FX Maniac this is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again welcome to another really cool uh, Tyflow and 3 Studio Max tutorial uh, in this tutorial I'll show you guys how to create some static and some piling snowball using Tyflow and 3 Studio Max so the static version would look something like this so you'd create like static snow I mean these uh, I'm not talking about these uh, falling snow particles I'm talking about these meshes that are done uh, those are done in after effects so yeah you can create something like this but more importantly the topic that we'll be focusing on more uh, in depth is going to be this uh, you know snow sort of piling effect so some objects are falling from a surface that has snow and they are accumulating and piling the snow along the way and keeping them and have a nice trajectory along with them so this is the effect that we're going to be taking a look at and if you're new to my channel and uh, you like my content make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already make sure to click on that subscribe and more importantly click on the bell and select all so that you'll be notified every time i upload a new tutorial and if you're looking for some great high quality music you can go ahead and check out our uh, second channel audio aura so here we present royalty free, no copyright music uh, for your videos and productions. And uh, yeah, so let's get started with the tutorial. All right, so let's get started. And uh, uh, at first, I'm just going to show you guys how to create some static snow without any movement or anything. Uh, just in case if you don't know it, uh, I mean, it probably do. But if you don't, you can just go ahead and, uh, you know, Use this technique and if you already know how to create some static snow so you can just skip this part and move on to uh, the you know snow piling part of the tutorial but you know uh, using the static technique you can you can create some beautiful renders so I've just done this for a, a channel identity for uh, the place I'm working on so it just it looks very nice and it is all tie flow so the snow in the um, in the trees and on the logo on the stone and everywhere it's looking pretty beautiful and you know what I'm about to show you you can do these things alright okay so I'm just gonna go into here it's a pretty simple one so I'm just gonna go into uh, extended primitives just add a torus knot the reason I'm using this object is just it's got some uh, cool shapes some cool geometry and to hide these uh, selection brackets you just hit shift J and if you're uh, using an older version you can just hit J so it's a bit changed so the next thing I'm going to do is going to the helpers and going to tie flow and create a tie icon and the icon is basically um, think of it as a direction in which the snow is falling so you can go ahead and you know uh, you know make it fall from every direction but I'm just gonna be using it from the top so just like that and then just go into the create panel, go to standard primitives and create a tie flow. And what I'm going to do is go into the editor and just move it here, shrink it down a little bit. I'm just going to create a birth operator and then I'm going to add a position raycast. So what it does is essentially, if you think about it, this is rays of, uh, you know, position or particles are falling down and it's only hitting the surfaces that it can see so it will hit this point of the surface but not this point because it cannot see it directly alright so for the um, raycast origin object I'm just gonna pick the icon and for the target objects I'm just gonna pick the torus knot so now you can see that um, if I go into the birth you can see it's from 0 to 200 I'm just gonna set it to 0 to 0 and we have 200 particles which we don't want we want a lot more so probably 2,000 or 20,000 particles so the more you have it the more detailed it's going to look so you can see that we're creating particles on you know the surfaces that it can cast some rays and in the bottom we don't have it so now simply go ahead and use the tie measure and uh, add the pick the tie flow so now we have this mesh and it's looking pretty nice. I mean the color is green so you can hit M. Uh, set your renderer to V-Ray and just close this. Add a standard material. You can go ahead and create a shader for this. 
add with a noise and everything, but uh, that is not the point. Point is how to create some statics now. So here we have it. So you can go ahead and play around with the time measure. So I'm just gonna go here. You can uh, you can go ahead and decrease the size of the uh, voxels to make it more like you know random. Or you can go ahead and enable the filtering. So if you enable this, you need to have a larger size and you have to decrease the voxel size like the less it is the more detailed it's going to be so if i hit f4 it's going to be more detailed but it's going to take a lot of time to process so you just have to play around a little bit to get the results that you're looking for but i think you know there are some types as well so you can go ahead and play around with them so yeah that is basically how you create a static snow. You can add a turbo smooth modifier on top and um, just like that. Maybe it's a little, uh, if I select this, yeah. Select it, go to time measure, maybe increase the radius size to 1.2. So we have this, yeah. So you can go ahead and switch the objects and it'll basically update. So I'm just gonna go probably add like a teapot the good old teapot. So I'll just add uh, pick this one. And now you have snow there as well. But then it needs to be in the, you know, in the range of that object for it to cast the particles, right? So yeah, that is uh, how you create like some simple static snow. Again, you can use it to create something like this if you, you know, put some work and put some time on it. But now moving on to the main part of this tutorial, which is uh, creating uh, some piling snow. So an object is moving and piling snow along the way. So that is the trick. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset this. All right. So for this example, I'm just going to be creating a plane quickly. So I'm uh, just I'm going to do it very quick because these are the things that you guys already know. So, uh, yeah. And I'm just going to be converting it to editable poly, hit 2, and just uh, hold down shift and drag it so that we have a new edge here. I just want to create like a little, uh, you know, falling surface. I'm going to add a turbo smooth modifier and add like four levels to it, probably five. So now it's looking pretty nice. And I'm just going to add some noise. So add a noise, set it to like 30 check fractal and probably 10 by 10 by 10 and yeah that's uh, a random noisy sort of surface probably we can we can lower this down even to create more like detail but i think it's fine yeah so this is going to be our surface so some objects this is going to be like the snow surface and some objects are going to fall down and sort of collect some snow along the way you can go back here and you can basically increase the length. So I'll just select this and just move it a little bit here. All right. So yeah, that's basically it. So this is our object. This is our surface. So surface. Now I'm going to be creating some objects moving along the surface using tie flow again. So just go ahead, create a tie flow and create an object uh, for the um, our collider objects to fall down from. So this is going to be the source. From here, they're just going to fall down just like this. All right. So uh, let's go into time flow. I'm just going to go and open the editor, just shrink it down a little bit, move this aside. I'm going to uh, burst some particles to like 20 frames. And I want like what, six of them to be there. And I'll add a force operator. And for the gravity, set it to negative 0.5 so that they are falling down. But then we don't have a, an object. They, they need to be emitted from this object. So I need to add a position object and pick the sphere. So now they are sort of falling down. You can see that they're there. Now I'm just gonna add a shape. So we'll go with some 3D. Uh, we'll do like geospheres for now and go into display geometry so now you can see them but they're very small so i'm just going to add a shape operator and set sorry not the shape the scale operator 
and set it to like 2000 so that we can see them a lot more better probably like 3000 yeah so now we have these objects but two things we want we want them to collide with the surface and we want them to collide with themselves as well so in order to get some realistic collisions between the objects and the object with the surface I'm just going to add a physics shape for them to collide with each other so now they're falling down and now in order to make them collide with this object I need to add a physics uh, collision and put it down here pick this and make sure that it is set to mesh because now they'll they'll collide with all these uh, imperfections of the mesh and it'll be a lot more accurate than if you were supposed to set it to like convex all right so just to show you if you set this to convex they're just going to follow the it's not going to be like it's off by a mile but then if you set it to mesh it's going to take the exact shape of the mesh all right so that is our objects i'm just going to bake them so i'll just add a export particles to objects and go down export particles and if i'm going a little fast you can go ahead and leave a comment or wherever you miss you can go and rewind it or whatever or if you want a basic tutorial about typhlo and everything you can just tell me in the comment section for this tutorial all right so we have our objects here so these are keyframed right here i'm just going to create a new typhlo i'll just uh, hide this so this one is going to be for the snow right so we've already created static snow now we're going to create some snow but then we want these objects to pilot along the way so first off again i'm just going to add a birth operator along a position object so just pick this surface and this time we don't want it to be uh, we want it to be static so zero to zero probably twenty thousand particles and we want to make it like uh, what yellow so now we can see it yellow is a little too uh, hard on the eye to watch so probably white yeah i'll make the surface um i mean a different color as well so that we can see it so i'm just going to go into v-ray and add a standard material to it so now we can see them but then we want these objects to collide uh, i mean to pick those uh particles along the way so what we can do is we're going to add a collision operator and uh, select all these objects first so i'll just go ahead here so I'll select these this one this one and i believe one more is yet to be born yeah so this one so now we have six objects selected i'm just going to add selected to the collision and make sure it is shape radius so it'll be more accurate so now these particles are colliding and they are falling down because these particles have a force these objects and they're just making the particles collide so we want those particles uh, to be sticking to the surface so I'm just going to add a uh, object bind operator so just here and again just select all of these objects and add selected and make sure they are locked to surface and snap to surface all right because they ju you just want it to snap to that surface and just link the collision to the object bind so now you can see very clearly that these objects are actually colliding and piling up those uh, particles along the way so you can see that clearly over there they are so yeah so now it's just a matter of meshing them so uh, yeah and you can see that they're leaving a nice trail behind just like that yeah and if I make this one bigger you will be able to I mean they're not going to yeah they're gonna pile but those objects are already animated right so now you can see clearly the path in which these particles are going and piling up now it's just a matter of meshing them so just like before I'm just gonna go here tie flow tie measure and just uh, pick the tie flow this one sorry 
pick yeah we've picked it but then why don't we see the oh uh, sorry we need to pick the other type flow sorry 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 just remove this pick the one with the newer particle so now we have the mesh and now you can see that they are uh, sort of picking that up but uh, there are two less of a particles and then we can go ahead and uh, increase the size of them and probably uh, the filter turn it on and some voxel size 0.6 so that we have more detail of course but then we need more particles of course so I'm just gonna go into this uh, tie flow go back here so initially we're gonna need a lot of particles because we just uh, we just scaled this right so I'm just gonna add probably like what 40,000 particles so this is gonna be pretty filled in and now it is taking some time but you can cache it but the main idea is these objects are actually you know accumulating the snow particles along the way as they are moving so you can see that they're there and they're sticking together so uh, for them you can just add like a general white material in order for them to look like the same just like that yeah so now it's looking pretty beautiful just like this yeah so the more I mean you can have like different objects different surfaces but this is the technique so a very simple and effective way and they are uh, you know procedural so you can you can change the surface you can change the objects and everything will just get updated right and they're just gonna be accumulating snow along the way just like that all right so this was the today's tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you learned something new uh, and i know there are, there are like plenty of tutorials about doing snow uh, using tie flow but uh, there are not any tutorial about creating these uh, piling snow effects so that's what i wanted to do and if you've enjoyed this tutorial make sure to give it a thumbs up uh, like it that would mean a lot to me and if you're new to my channel you're very welcome to hit that subscribe button and click on the bell and select all that will allow you to be notified every time I upload a new video. Alright, so this was the today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, enjoy working!